you were a church kid. You grew up, your dad was a, a bishop and your mom was the church piano player. Oh, yes. <laughs> you dug deep. So, <laughs> he's a, yes, he's a, I, do, I do my homework a little bit before these yeah. conversations. Yes, yes. So as a, as a church kid, did you, did you encounter God in a genuine way early on? Did you have an encounter where you where it became real to you? I know a lot of times church kids, pastors' kids can struggle with that. Like, is this my faith or is this my parents' mm-hmm. faith? Was that a struggle for you? Uh, you know, I I remember like yesterday walking down the aisle when I was eight years old. But I was like, I want to give my life to Jesus, and I I was nervous to do it. But I remember, like, okay, 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 now go go go. <laughs> so I walked down the aisle, and um and if 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 I had it my way, that would have been the end. Everything else is happy, you know. You know, what is what is happily happily uh, happily ever after? Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but my when I turned ten, my parents divorced, and so mm-hmm. that uh, led me down a path of trying to. I mean, I was angry, and so that probably was what started my whole absence of even feeling the feelings that come across. So. I I learned quickly that I had to work for my own faith. Not, well, that's not the right way to put it. I had to work on giving God myself, um, yeah. which which I didn't know how to do, you know, earlier on. But mm-hmm. but eventually, God in His in the way He does so lovingly um, led me to Him again, yeah. and so that's what I found. You know, as an eight year old, life is well. Life is not as complicated sometimes as it is when you're in it. Well, for me, life was not as complicated as it mm-hmm. got to be, you know, as an adult. But God, yeah. God knows how each of us need him. So, yeah. Sure. Now, you music has been in you mm-hmm. for a long time. But what mm-hmm. people may not know as much about is your your art. Which one? <laughs> I know you're a talented painter. I will go ahead and say that so you don't have to. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. you know, that's a, that's it would a be big... weird to say, yes, I'm a talented painter. Which one came <laughs> more naturally to you? Which one was more natural? Um, uh, music for sure. I I, str- okay. I mean, I said, I said, I quit on music. I mean, I quit on art. I tried to quit on music, but God wouldn't let me. <laughs> but I definitely quit on art. Wait, why? And- why did you try to quit on both of them? Well, I earlier on, I quit on art because I couldn't, I wanted it to be perfect. I had a perfection issue. <laughs> so, and okay. I couldn't figure out how to make the art do what I wanted it to, to do. You know, it. Uh, um, I just needed to learn more. So I set it down for maybe 20 years and then, Whoa, came back and really? I set it down for a long time. It wasn't until I was painting Spider Man for my son and I and and then it started coming back. And I, I think after so after that amount of time I realized um I saw it differently, you know. I don't know mm-hmm. why all of the ways, but I saw art differently. So um and and still sometimes I have to get in the right frame of mind, like the right lane the right brain, left brain thing, the left brain that says, Oh, you can't do it, but the right brain who says yes we can do anything so so i was trying to figure out how to uh set the left side down i think i have the left side one of the sides of the brain i think i got that one right. of the sides of the brain yeah 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 but and i and for for music i i uh i remember just going through a time where i couldn't figure out how to complete the things that i wanted to complete and um and i and and it i learned how to use that ability to not focus in my creativity and figure out how to ask for help around on the other parts, you know, whether it's uh-huh. bartering or trying to hire somebody or something like that, you know, <laughs> saying, this is not my wheelhouse. Can you do this please? <laughs> so did the perfectionism, did that creep into your music too? Oh, so when you say yes. that you struggled to like complete things, so was it similar with art where it was like, I can't make this perfect so what's the point? <laughs> yeah, no, um, it, it it was. It did it with music, too. Um, hmm. In music, it was, I looked at it as I can't complete things, but it was really because I was trying to make it so perfect that I didn't allow myself to complete it. I mean, in the end, it was a Jesus problem. It was a God problem. It was How so? me because I, I didn't 
let God, I, I wanted things. I remember vividly God telling me one day, the things you're looking for on earth only exist in heaven. Mm. And it was then when I realized, oh, this is supposed to have imperfections. You know, I think one of the paintings, I, I remember painting a painting up and I was trying to paint the ground and I ended up just doing, just making a bunch of little messy looking things. And I realized it looked like the earth. And then I was like, wait a minute, when yeah. you zoom in on anything in life, it's imperfect. It looks imperfect. But when you zoom out, all of a sudden you see this beautiful landscape where you see this beautiful mm -hmm. globe or you see people as being beautiful. You zoom, on, you zoom in on our lives, you realize we all need Jesus. You zoom out, we look like, oh, everybody's getting along. You know, they're just walking down the street, <laughs> but it's not so. So the way yeah. it, I, I had to um, search myself and ask what am I handing over to God and where am I trying to be my own God as, as far as I want control of it? I think I can do it. In actuality, I need Jesus. Mm, yeah. No, I mean, that that need for perfection and that can, in, when you apply that to faith, that can lead to a whole lot of striving, a whole lot of trying to earn God's mm -hmm. approval, mm -hmm. trying to do things to make God happy mm -hmm. with me. Um, none of that sounds familiar, right? I mean, none of that crept into. <laughs> oh, that was <laughs> so, like, if it crept into art, if it crept into music, was has that been a battle for you as well to kind of rest in the grace of God rather than trying to like earn your way uh, to Him? You know what? Um, I think it's funny because I think the reason I try to make things so perfect, I don't know. There's a thing called the Enneagram that people do sometimes where it's, mm -hmm. it's always it's one of these personality things. Well, mine, I would identify as an Enneagram four, right? The kind of person okay. who's individual, but they want everything to be perfect. But the, the reason why is because they don't think they're enough. And so it's the shame that a, that a person would carry. And actually when you're, when you're feeling the shame, the unhealthy side is one thing, but the healthy side of shame is realizing no, it's right. You are not enough. The only way you get to be enough is when you realize that Jesus is enough for you. Uh, and so those things, those uh, those imperfections, uh, we find them, we find the perfection in our God. So I so all that to say, I was trying to do perfection because I didn't believe that I was enough anyway. I just didn't see that that's actually a good thing. I'm not enough. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah. well, I didn't see the good parts of that. And so, uh, so there was one part of me that um, knew knew I couldn't do it without God. So you know, it's kind of like this two sided coin. One side of me was like totally, oh, I just suck, God. You just please help me. <laughs> but then, so God brought some balance in there, tried to bring it, you know, in a midway kind of thing. Yeah. If that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So you, uh, you are, are an artist in every sense of the word. You, you're a creative. What do you try to communicate? Let's start with art. What, what do you, what, what's your passion and what do you try to communicate when you're painting? Mm. When I'm painting, I, I try to just follow where I feel like I'm being led in that moment. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes it's, uh, oh, I've never painted that before. And then sometimes it's maybe I'm doing a commission for someone. And so it's, it's, it's really kind of where I try to put, uh, put into a painting what they're hearing in their heart. But a lot of times what I've, what I've done, like I paint my, I paint my CD covers. Right. And so, Okay. Um, one of the songs I did was "You Keep Hope Alive." Now, people, uh, this this song "You Keep Hope Alive," um, it came from a place where I I had heard about a riot and and it broke my heart that people may look at my son differently. And he was thirteen at the time, and um, and I just couldn't. And he's just a, just a good kid. And so I I was wrestling yeah. with the idea that man, you know. Um, the world is not this kind place. It's, it's going to be cruel. Some people are going to be cruel to my son, you know, for no apparent reason. Um, mm -hmm. um, and so I realized, I didn't realize until later, but I painted uh, a, a picture of a, my hand holding a light bulb that, you know, basically we need his uh, power. We, we, um, anyway, it was about power. And so then what I yeah. didn't realize is that same week I was writing a, uh, the song you keep hope alive with my friend and 
what I found in that moment is that a lot of times I'm painting what I won't say in the song. Like for the song, it oh. needs to be like for the song, I, if I want it to be something more, something that can, that all of us can find our story in, you know, you keep mm-hmm. hope alive. People would come to me and have all these different stories about it, whether it's uh, some kind of way of they, they, the way they need Jesus to keep hope alive in it, whether it's yeah. the hospital room or whether, you know, their marriage or, um, you know, uh, but n- none of them knew that this is where I actually got it from, unless they listened to the song story. But in the art, I was able to get out all of those feelings and those thoughts okay. um, and put them in the painting. So what I found a lot of times is it's my way to express what I may not be saying in the song, um, particularly in particularly, but um, but I can I can put it on the canvas and and let people huh. find their own in- in- interpretations. You know, and that's that's yeah. really deep. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I don't all... always do that, but sometimes the art, sometimes <laughs> the music is defined by the art. Sometimes I'm listening to some, some music while I'm painting. I was painting Ray Charles. So I listen to his whole discography. Right. And you're like, Whoa. <laughs> so then I go over to the piano. I'm like, I like how he did this right here. <laughs> but yeah. So, <laughs> okay. It's just a so you've got a variety of musical influences. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes. Stevie Ray Wonder's Charles. One. Well, Stevie Wonder is probably my, most uh my, my favorite but i love okay. music so I, I i mean it could be beethoven one day it could be uh it could be steve Vai on a good rock guitar another day you know, you know yeah and then what uh what are you trying to communicate through music what is your um what's the passion i know you write you've written songs for the church i know you've you worship been a worship pastor your heart is for the church is that where your what drives you when you write music Yes, when I'm when I'm writing music, I'm writing um, with stories in mind, you know, um, with with just imagining us being at the feet of Jesus. A lot of times, uh, it could be a vertical, giving it straight to Jesus. Uh, it can be the yeah. stories that we hear horizontally, and sometimes it's just uh, birthed out of a conversation I be maybe having with God, or you know, in my own personal time. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but it's it's in yeah. some kind of way it's. I'm trying to point to God, point to Jesus in yeah. uh, Even if it's like a song I did with a Toby called Show Up, Choose Love, even if it's a song where it's, we're trying to horizontally unite, it's still in the name of Jesus. And um, so that's, that's, that's super important to me. Hmm. So what, what's the fresh thing that you feel like God's doing in you? I know as a creative, you're constantly expressing yourself through music, through words, through painting. Uh, how do you stay connected with God? How do you, uh, sometimes when you're pouring out a lot, you can start to feel like you're drying up. How do you keep mm-hmm. it fresh? Um, well, one of the ways is I, I love church. I love, I mean, I, I love to be grounded in church. And so either I'm at church or I'm if I'm on the road that day, we still do tour church. And so we'll Mm -hmm. be on the road, but I'm also that day, I'll still be watching the broadcast. Um, And then in my own personal time, just praying and reading. Um, Yeah. And so one of the things I've been doing lately is running sprints. (laughs) So I started, I started off, I mean, I started doing it just so I could work off my desserts. (laughs) (laughs) Fair. (laughs) But, the clarity that I found in it um, was kind of mine, but I didn't expect to to find so much clarity uh, for my time in that, just for the day in that. And so that's kind of helped me a lot. Um, mm. I do like these 30 second sprints Danny Goki was telling me about. And I was like, man, nobody should run, should sprint for 30 seconds. That's super long. It sounds long. It sounds short. It's a long time. You get to second that's 22. A, yeah. <laughs> it's so hard. It's a, it's a long time. Trying to think, yeah. I, I, I'm like, okay, the world record in like the hundred meter dash is like, you know, ten seconds or somewhere, maybe just under ten. Like that's that's a lot of running. Like thirty Wait, seconds how, is almost. How do you know that? Oh, I'm a big sports know? fan. <laughs> oh my goodness! You just I'm just, wow. I don't know the exact time, but you know, I I, I follow sports. Uh, my husband's a basketball coach, former basketball player, so <laughs> and siblings who ran track, so. I'm not like oh, wow. super well versed in all sports, but like I, I'm, I know enough to like, <laughs> I, I guess mean, hold a just, conversation. 
you pulled a world record stat out of your back pocket. That's pretty impressive. Oh, someone's going to listen to this and double check me and be like, no, it was actually 9.867 seconds. So I'm, I'm estimating there. But yeah, 30 seconds is a lot of sprinting. That was my point. Yeah, yeah. That's a long yeah, sprint, but you feel like you get clarity. I do. I do. I feel like I get I feel like I get clarity and balance in it. Um, and I think yeah. one of the other things I do is the exact opposite, which is I learned this practice um, just sitting still in silence. Yeah. Like a 30 minute kind of it's funny. 30 minutes. I guess we do everything in 30s now. I don't know. But but yeah. Um, 30 minutes, a, 30 seconds. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, there's just a lot a lot you hear when you're just sitting still, um, especially outside, you know. Yeah. yeah. Are you still a perfectionist? I've I tell you what, COVID, the time during COVID helped me a lot. Um, mm-hmm. be, I think one of the things I remember is, you know, before it was make sure that your video is, you know, you got to make sure this is that and that, and that. And then in COVID, people were like, look, we're just putting it out there. <laughs> this is my all... living room. <laughs> right. Suit ties. Laundry's not done. Shorts. <laughs> I know. I mean, man. So that 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 really I, I would say that actually changed a lot for me. That was really monumental in my life. That time of realizing that it doesn't have to be we just need we just need Jesus, you know. And so yeah. um yeah, that that helped me a lot. So yeah. I'm I, I'm I'm always trying to keep a lookout for it. I'm a recovering perfectionist, so <laughs> so I got to keep a lookout for it. And I have to ask my friends if I'm if I'm leaning towards it, but um Outside of that, you know. <laughs> we play your music a lot uh, on Moody Radio. Oh, thank you. So the, here's the funny thing, though, because I do love sports. There's a basketball player whose name is J.J. Redick. Yes. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. <laughs> well, he and went so to Duke I, University. Yes, he went to Duke. And so I promise you for the first, I don't know, couple of weeks that your song was new. I don't know what the first song it was. Uh-huh. What was your first single that really hit? Well, was we did it? You Keep Hope Alive with Mendisa. And then I did God Turn It Around. Yes. God turn it around. And so every time I saw that pop up, I would have to like, I would, what would want to come out of my mouth is (laughs) JJ Reddick. And I'm like, no, that's a different, that's a different Reddick. And so every time I see that, I kind of chuckle like, no, it's John Reddick. It's JJ Reddick is the basketball player. You know, what's super funny about that. My dad (laughs) went to Duke University as he was get, he got his Masters of Divinity from Duke University. So I was born oh. at Duke University Hospital. So you have something in common. Maybe we you're, do, maybe yeah. you're related. I don't know. I don't know. He left one of the D's out of his name though. So then I'm like, yeah, it's not me. <laughs> a little different. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the time. This has been well, a lot thank of fun. You. Snapshot Testimony is a Moody Radio podcast. If you'd like to connect, you'll find us on Facebook, Instagram, and now YouTube. Just search Snapshot Testimony. I'm your host, Ali Domerson, and together we're sharing the moments that shape a life of faith in Christ. Thanks for listening.